Members of Reddit, what was your O moment? Story one. While I was training at a pretty chic salon in London, there was a kid who came in for a with his mum. She was a regular, the typical bi-weekly blowdry client that was always dressed in the finest fineries and sent her kid to private school. He sat down in my colleague's chair and the mum gave a fairly detailed and particular instruction of a short back and sides as if my colleague had never heard of a hair before. She then sat down in the waiting area and picked up a magazine and began reading. This kid was a little cow. He squirmed and complained the entire time. My colleague, bless her, was very diplomatic and tried to be firm, but fair to this kid. She was very experienced at this point and dealt with a fair share of spoiled kids. Towards the end of the, she very clearly told the boy to stay still as she was cutting the stray hairs around his ears. She told him that her scissors had just been sharpened and would hurt a lot if she him. He agreed to keep his head still. However, as previously stated, this boy was a little cow. He suddenly turned his head to something and she caught the top of his ear. Now she wasn't lying about getting her scissors sharpened. And those things are hella sharp when they are. I will never forget the top bit of his ear just resting on the blades of her scissors and her wide-eyed pale expression of realization of what had happened. I don't know if you've ever an ear, but those things bleed. At this point, the mother put down her magazine, put her thunder face on, and stormed over to my colleague's section with the screaming and bleeding child in it. Wordless, she raised her arm with an open hand and slapped the kid straight in the face. That'll teach you for not listening. The whole salon was in complete shock. She pulled him up by the arm and dragged him out of the salon without a word to anyone else. We never saw them again. Absolutely, the most mental experience of working in a salon. That and the crazy color change I had to do, but that is a story for another time. Edit. Spelling edit too. Thanks for the sticker. Story two. Barber here. I'm pretty experienced and a successful barber with my own place, but I definitely made some mistakes along the way. This story still makes me pass away inside a little. When I was training, maybe a few months in so I had a bit of confidence. Enough for me to not realize I still didn't know what I was doing. I was cutting this guy's hair and I got to his fringe. He wanted it really short and I was standing in front of him cutting along his forehead whilst chatting away. I took my scissors away to comb his hair but like flicked them around my fingers and they swung round and hit the guy right in the flipping iris. I froze. He froze. Eventually I asked, did I just hit you in the eye by the way? He said, I think so trying to act like it wasn't sore for some reason. It eventually blew up in the shop once his shock wore off and someone else got him out the door. Found out a month later, his wife was a nurse and she used some kind of eye drop and his eye was only scratched. Thank God because I thought I blinded him. I gave him a free haircut next time. Just the one though. Story three. I was in school still at the time and was cutting this guy's hair. He brought his girlfriend along and she was watching like a hawk over me. I'm halfway through the and almost done with the fade when the person next to me has their trolley too close to me, so I go to move it. But I didn't pay attention that my other hand had the clipper still running with no guard on. I made a nasty line through the fade that didn't look intentional at all and was sweating my peach off on how I was going to fix this. The girlfriend, of course, points it out and the client is actually super chill about it and has me basically just run a super high 0.5 on the sides and back. Three years later, and to this day I haven't had an incident that bad. Story 4 not seeing a lot of actual barbers in this thread because probably a lot of these sort of stories will make you look like a bad barber. But, oh well. Here's a collection of my oh cow stories from my eight years in the industry. Beauty school. This tweaker dude and his hippie girlfriend come in for $7 haircuts. Immediately, something seemed off about the girl. She seemed a little not all there and was cross-eyed and had dreads poking out of her hippie hat. The appointments were a bit staggered, so I finished the guy's one all over buzz cut and my classmate calls me over to help with hers. When she took off the girl's hat, her hair was completely matted and filthy, and beneath the matted hair were stinking, suppurating sores covering her scalp. When we combed at the hair, her scalp would begin to give and split away wetly. We called over an instructor who tried to explain that we couldn't service someone who was literally oozing. She didn't seem to understand, and they left without paying. I'll never forget that smell. Also beauty school, when bang trims go poorly. If you even slightly too high and a cowlick in the front goes boing and springs the hair right up off the face, there's literally no coming back from a bad bang trim. To be fair, if it was that important, she shouldn't have been having students doing it. This also applies to colors. Local teenage girls would come in expecting a full head of highlights and then be shocked and angry when it goes poorly and takes forever and there's huge lines near the root. Arguments between 17-year-old clients and 19-year-old jailbird beauty school girls were really common. Lice. I've had three run-ins with lice on kids in my eight years of cutting hair. You just have to stop cutting immediately, discreetly send them back to their parents, and spend the next hour cleaning and feeling crawly. 
Discovering something like lice is like the classic oh cow moment in haircutting. Years ago, I was working at a shop in SF's Tenderloin. I was standing near the window looking absentmindedly outside. This out woman on the corner decides that I was looking at her. So she shambles into the shop right up to the station and starts threatening me, inches from my face. I become acutely aware that my razors and shears are sitting in plain view on the counter next to us and that I have to get them into my possession and away from her before she can use them against me. I decided that if I'd have to stab a crackhead in self-defense, I'd use my trusty eight inches. Before it gets to that, my co-workers intervene and begin corralling her outside. At the doorway, she starts swinging, punches one co-worker in the face, and bites the other on the chest. Cops showed up pretty quick and arrested her about a block away. I spent another year at that shop constantly looking over my shoulder, certain that she'd one day reappear. Once had a dude pass out after a haircut. Based on what he told me, he had some sort of sensory issues, and the combination of heat, the neck strip, clipper buzzing, and noise of the shop overwhelmed him. If you've ever dealt with a person fainting, you know what an oh cow moment it is. One minute dude is standing up and looking a little worried, next he is crumpling to the floor. I'm a little guy, but I was able to sort of catch him and ease him down without anyone getting hurt. It was pretty scary. My first thought was that I somehow terminated him. And my personal worst story. I was cutting one of my regular's hair, and he always insisted on scissor over comb instead of clippers on the side which is fine and kind of my thing anyhow. I was working in the lower right corner of his nape, moving upwards with my biggest 8 inches inch dry cutting scissors, and he sort of twisted toward me to say something at the precise moment my shears closed, causing me to close the pivot of my shears right onto the flesh atop of his ear. It wasn't like a little common nick, I felt my tools puncture living flesh. The whole top chunk was like hanging off and bleeding profusely. My coworkers said I looked pale and panicked, and I still don't know how I did it, but I managed to get the ear chunk back in place with surgical glue and staunch the bleeding with talcum power. The craziest part is he kept coming to see me, insisted on paying full price plus tip, and continued coming back up until he moved away a year later. About five years later, not a day goes by at work where I don't think about the sickening sensation of metal on flesh, and I'm happy to say nobody has been hurt since. Story 5. Not me, but my mom who is a hairdresser. Did you know that some hair dye chemicals don't play well together? Turns out the lady had used some sort of home hair dye chemical that basically has tiny bits of metal in it. She didn't mention. My mom goes to dye her hair and puts the professional dye on it. And the hair more or less starts melting as the dye reacts. Her hair was totally ruined. There was no saving it. Only thing to do was to just get the new dye off as fast as possible. She was pretty understanding about the whole situation, though. Story 6. My co-worker at a salon was cutting a girl's hair and found lice. The girl's mom had left her for the trim, and she had to wait for her mom in the lobby. We spent the next hour or so frantically cleaning around all of the other clients and stylists to sanitize the whole place top to bottom. When the mom came back and asked her why she didn't have her hair, she replied, they found out. Who brings their lice-ridden child to the salon? Story 7. The barber my dad took us kids to growing up kept a plastic ear in a big glass jar of water. Told all the little kids, jokingly, that it was the ear of a little boy who wouldn't be still when getting a hair. And he accidentally, this kid's ear off, said he was keeping it in formaldehyde to remind us all to be very still. It largely had the desired effect on the younger kids. Edit. Spelling edit. Thanks for the award kind stranger. I'm no longer an award virgin. Story 8. Oh geez. I've been barbering for 7 years and I've got a couple stories. Mostly communication errors. I had a client come in with a super tight haircut, looked like it had just been, and asked for a zero on the sides. I'm not sure what this guy was on, but a zero is bald to me. So I start my bald line for my fade, and he freaks out that it's way too short and I ruined his haircut. Since this never happens to me, I got super upset and felt absolutely terrible. I've had clients who text me and ask for an appointment, and then I forget to book it. Then they show up and I'm busy, and they don't have an appointment. I always comp them because I feel terrible. I used to work in a low-income neighborhood and worked at a barber shop. I was cutting a kid's hair, and since it was so curly, you couldn't see his scalp or anything. Started cutting into it, and sure enough, he had ringworm. I have hella stories, but those are just the ones that come to mind. Edit. Thanks for my first award. I'm glad it was on a comment about something I spend all my time doing and love so much, and not something weird lol. Story 9. Brother of a barber who used to be a hair model? Back when I used to have a good head of hair. His instructor told a story during one of the shows about a mobster falling asleep during a shave. While shaving him, he accidentally off a mole. He said he kept on putting towels on him and then snuck across the street and hid in a bar, watching through the window until the mobster left. Since he was only renting the chair in the shop, he grabbed all his stuff and found another place to work after he was sure the mobster was gone. Story 10. 
the typical not a barber here, but I used to go to a local barber college to get my hair because it was cheap. One girl had never a white guy's hair and her teacher asked if I was okay with it. I said sure she has to learn somehow and it's just hair it can be shaved and should grow back. Told her how I wanted the hair. Pretty simple, a little short and off the ears. Jokingly said, do not take my ears off. Long story short, I left with a bald head and a band-aid on the top of my left ear after bleeding like a stuck pig due to blood thinners, where she nicked me with the scissors. Even her teacher couldn't save the hair. I did my best to try and help the girl calm down as she was ugly crying. Went back a month later and asked if the girl was there. Thankfully, she was, and I simply smiled and said town too. She did it perfect second time around. Story 11. I'm not a licensed barber or professional by any means, but I have been cutting my own hair for about 10 years. I'm really good at it, save a lot of time and money, know exactly how to do it, and never have to worry about getting something I don't like anymore. But it has taken a lot of trial and error over the years, especially when I was learning how to fade. This was three years ago. I start cutting like I normally do and start fading my sides. At the top of my head, the guard pops off. Huge flipping chunk falls down my face. So me, still learning, not knowing how to fix it, decides it's best to just buzz it, which I've really only had to do three times in my career. I look dumb as cow with a buzzed head. So for some unknown reason, I also decide to shave my beard, thinking maybe it'll equal it all out. Nope. Apologies if this offends anyone, but I look like I'm receiving chemo at this point. Bro, I look like a thumb. Big toe looking peach. So I hated myself. My wife still makes fun of me to this day. I got endless cow from my family and was attached to a hat for like two months. This was the moment that made me never fudge up again. Story 12. Been a professional barber for two years now. I like to tell my clients this story all the time. But it is the first time writing it so bear with me. When I was in barber school, I had a mother and her son come in to get a haircut for her son. They did not speak English very well, so there was a bit of a language barrier. She told me she wanted a two on top, which is very short, 14 inch left to be exact, and the little boy had close to three inches on top, so I figured they did not understand the lengths. I did try to explain to her that the two would be very short by showing her the guard, but she insisted he got a two on top. Being the dumbass I was, I started my clipper down the middle of the kid's head. I remember hearing the clipper take off a bunch of hair, and the child knew something was wrong and starting screaming. Oh, cow! The mother came over and scolded me for taking it too short. She told me that she meant she wanted two inches left, not a number two guard. I apologized like five times and told them that I would at least make the buzz look good and get them a free haircut next time. As I was finishing up the kid's hair, literally on the last pass with my clippers, by an act of God or something, the guard I was using popped off and I went straight to skin down the middle of the top of this poor child's head. Oh, I put my hand over the bald patch on this kid's head and just pretended that nothing had happened. Thankfully, one of my instructors came by and I was able to flag him down for some assistance. I took my hand off the kid's head and my instructor started chucking and told me to go in the back and get some water while he sorts this out. He ended up getting in a big fight with the mother because she thought I did it on purpose for yelling at me earlier. But it was an accidentally, and she did come to a school and pay $1.05 for a student haircut. Story 13. My mother is a barber. She was tasked with cutting my husband's hair for our wedding. The guard comb thing that goes on electric razor popped off while she was enthusiastically talking to me. She accidentally buzzed a zero on the back of his head. A zero is the shortest you can the hair without it being bald. I we never told him, and no pictures were taken of the back of his head. If I can help it, I'll be taking this to my grave. If not, he'll forgive me, but I'll feel bad still. Story 14. Not the barber in this story. My younger sister was. This story happened about 38 years ago, so I'm recalling as best as I can remember. Among our friends group was a very sweet young man who we called Bubba. A little heavy and not the sharpest tool in the shed, but a sweet, good-hearted guy. Bubba's hair to the sky in his face, which drove Sissy nuts. We should note that he had a huge crush on Sissy. One evening, we were sitting around my parents' dining room table playing spades. That's a card game. As always, Bubba's hair was hanging over his eyes. Sissy was practically twitching, watching him brushing it away every 30 seconds. Finally, she spoke up and said, Bubba, you need a haircut. Let me just trim your bangs. Of course, he immediately agreed. Scissors and a towel were quickly tracked down and Sissy started clipping. It was uneven and kind of patchy. This isn't going well. One of Genius Friends spoke up and said it ain't even. But I got an idea. Don't trim anymore for a minute. Dude pulls my mom's biscuit mixing bowl out of the cupboard and plonks it on poor Bubba's head. There, just straight across. And she did. Then straight across the back. The oh cow moment happened when Sissy took the bowl off Bubba's head and we realized she had given poor Bubba a literal bowl. He looked like the Dutch boy paint kid's pothead cousin. Story 15. My ex-girlfriend was the barber in this story and I was the one getting the haircut. I had a gotten a last-minute interview for a job, so I asked if she could my hair. 
She didn't have any experience in cutting hair, but I figured she would do a better job than me. We went out to the backyard and I don't know if the sun was in her eyes or if she was just nervous. But as soon as I saw the first snip she had taken from the front, I knew she had too much off. She took a step back and looked like she was about to burst into tears. I assured her that it was okay because there was nothing that could be done about it except try to not go any shorter. She finished up and the end result was kind of goofy looking, but I wasn't too upset. I knew it would grow out and I really appreciated her doing that. And although I kept thanking and reassuring her it was okay, it took at least a day before she fully believed I was okay with it. Had it been a professional, I probably would have been more upset. But everyone makes mistakes and bad haircut is only temporary. Here are a couple of pictures from a few weeks or so after the haircut. You can see what I mean about the front being too short, and it does look a bit better, but it looked really bad right after the haircut. Story 16. Not me, but my mom. She's been doing hair for 40 plus years, and last Friday she had a new customer who was so unhappy with how her hair turned out. She called out of work that day while still in the chair. My mom gave up her Saturday off to fix it, but the lady is coming back in two weeks, so we'll see if that happens again. In the meantime, my mom's stressing that this lady truly hated her hair that much, and it's first time anything like this has ever happened to her. Story 17. Not a barber, but within the first two weeks of COVID lockdowns, my boredom mixed with ADHD imposals brought me to think shaving my whole head was a good idea. I also convinced my brother to do it with me because why not for him, okay? For me, big mistake. Firstly, I do not have the best hairline, which I underestimated because once the top was gone, that cow was pulling graft functions on my forehead. Ye equal sign you messed up up head ass. I should also mention I am very skinny, so mix the shaved head with that and I looked like I was on chemo. In conclusion, good learning experience, but never again. Story 18. Little late to the party. Not a barber, but a submarine sailor. Inevitably, someone on the boat has to take the role of barber. Very early on, I figured out that if I hair, I could gain favor with people around me. First few hundred cuts went surprisingly smooth, and I gained a reputation for being good enough to get a for the wife. I had a waiting list, worked after hours, even spent money on some professional gear. It's a week before we get home from our long underway. Guys are lining up to get dolled up for their reunions. This older guy sits down, asks for a simple, buzz the top to a five, and skin fade the sides. I start on my first pass on the top, clippers through his greasy hair with easy. Boat rolls, I compensate. I'm almost done with the top and going for my final pass right down the middle. As I reach the front and shift to pull the clippers back, two things happen simultaneously. The man sneezes and the guard flies off. The microsecond between causes a perfect bald patch an inch behind his hairline. I handed him a 10 as an IOU for the fix, up he'll have to get in a few weeks. Story 19. Not a barber, but I was getting my hair done once when all hell broke loose. This girl with extremely long hair past her butt came in for a haircut. Barber asked her how long she wanted her hair. There was miscommunication. The barber heard that she wanted it to the middle of her back. She later said she just wanted it trimmed. Someone misheard or she lied for a free. Either way, a few minutes later she started crying because he off a good foot of hair on one side. She ran out of salon crying, was outside on the phone in panic mode. They had her come back after an hour and the master stylist finished the Either way, I feel bad for her. Story 20. I'm a little late to the party. Student barber. One of my very first cuts, which I should add I had never hair before I went to school, was an older gentleman. This gentleman had bushy, wild eyebrow hair, so my instructor asked me to clean it up for him. Trimmer over comb was how she instructed it. I was nervous and shaky and my hand slipped and I came, literally, within centimeters of his eyelid with the trimmer. I gasped, pulled it back, half expecting to see a bloody blinded eye. He was totally fine. Thought I all of his eyebrow off. So I finished the service without cutting him and went on with my day. Story 21. I was a hairstylist for 17 years. In the mid-90s, two brothers walk in. One about 17 or so, the other about 10. 17-year-old leaves. My friend gets the 10-year-old. Asks him what he wants. A mohawk, he says. Mohawk, are you sure? Yes, yes, says the kid. And he gets a mohawk. 17-year-old brother comes back and is visibly confused seeing his brother with a mohawk. Why did you get a mohawk? He asks. Little brother says, I asked for a mohawk and got this. The older brother says, no, you were supposed to ask for a bowl cut. So the younger one forgot to say the right name and got a completely different haircut. Boy, FC, this was when bowl cuts were popular. Story 22. Hairdresser of 12 years. I once was combing a young girl's hair that had just got her cartilage pierced a few days prior. Sure enough, I snag it with the comb and rip the barbell straight through her ear. I went physically weak at the knees and cried a bit. It bled a ton. But she was and is the kindest client I've ever had. She refused to not pay me and never told any of her family, whom are my clients as well, what happened. Still cringe at this moment to this day. Story 23. I'm not a barber, 
but twice in my life I've had someone cutting my hair legit gasp and put their hand to their mouths. Then try to cover the shock and strike a kind of pensive how's that looking face. I don't blame the first guy, even though I had warned him. I told my neighbor my beard trimmer was deceptively small when he showed up to trim me up and informed me his ex-roommate had stolen his clippers. With the first line down the middle, he knew. After a couple more, he told me he thought we should stop, but I told him it was too late. He had given me the monk. The second was at an actual barber shop. They were younger dudes who prided themselves on being classic before it was cool. They had a keg, and they'd offer you a drink no matter the time of day. Not sure how I didn't see this red flag back then. I'd had my hair cut there a few times, and I enjoyed it. That is until I had my first afternoon, one move in, and the barber immediately gasped, and well, you know the rest. He managed to prevent the Buddha, but only barely. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. I know this post is more than long enough already, but I just remembered one more. And this guy was the biggest flipping unpleasant person of them all. Me. It was my 25th birthday, and without going into detail, this is long enough already. But withholding all exaggeration, it was the worst flipping birthday of my life. Somewhere between being way too drunk and incredibly sad, I decided to my own hair. Back then I was crazy poor and did this a few times prior to the night in question. Never so drunk, though. I had a job interview that I couldn't afford to do poorly in the next day, though. At first, everything was going fine. But then, when I went to touch a little bit of hair on the side of my head, I slipped and buzzed. I took a whole razor-sized chunk out. Fun fact was using same clippers as in story one. But despite the poor decisions, the buzz in my hair, the hangover, and reeking of booze, I got the job. Story 24. My mom has a doodle that requires regular trims. One day, she tells me the groomer is incompetent. Mom goes on to say that she took it into her own hands to repair the hideous chop job her baby was sporting. She starts to laugh. She can barely talk. She is laughing so hard as she says, I think I owe the groomer an apology. She presents her fluff baby, and it is sporting a dozen bald patches, a lopsided mustache, and a rat tail. Story 25. I used to my flatmate's hair in my uni halls. My mate and myself taught ourselves from YouTube videos, and a lot of trial and error. One day, I was cutting one of the guy's hair, let's call him Jake, but I didn't have my clippers. Jake, not his real name, had a set of beard trimmers which had a pseudo guard you could use. I figured it was better than nothing, proceeded to give him a three back and sides and a club on top. Jake wanted his three blended down into a one at the bottom. Yep, no problem, all done. Until I noticed that due to the style of the guard on his beard trimmers, every time Jake put his head back while I was cutting, it had left a line in his hair. I ended up having to give him a zero undercut all the way around, which looked quite sick in fairness, but Jake never came to me for a haircut again. Ha, ha, ha. Story 26. Not a professional, but I have two stories that somewhat relate to each other. When I was in high school, my mom would try to save some money by cutting my hair herself. When she was about to finish, she saw a part she needed to fix and grabbed the clippers, forgetting she already took off the guard, and gave me a bald spot at my hairline at the top of my forehead. Cow was traumatic. Fast forward nine years to about five months ago. COVID is in full swing. People can't really get haircuts from barbers. A friend of mine needed a haircut, and she was willing to trust me. Basically, all she wanted was the sides to be at a three. I told her my incident with my mom cutting my hair and that I would never let that happen to her. Then I noticed the guard on the counter, and I started crying. Story 27. I was at barber school, and a mother came in dragging her son by the hair, demanding for someone to give him a baldy. When no one was willing because he was crying... She got mad and threw nearby barber equipment on the floor and proceeded to whip him with a belt in front of like 30 barber students, three instructors, and the two co-owners. Some of the barber students who got their cow thrown on the ground then tried to fight the lady. I think everyone there who wasn't trying to fight the lady had an oh cow moment lil mao. She got thrown out by one of the instructors, but she came back about two hours later with a chair and a brand new pair of Walmart clippers. She knocked on the windows and started shaving his head outside the store. Story 28. So many once had a teenage boy playing with himself under the cape while I was using the clippers on his neckline. Oh, cow. Tried to clean up the hairline around an old farmer's ear. Peeled back the ear to reveal a stench that must have been from years of filth growing between his ear and his head. It was brown and looked like actual cow. Probably a centimeter thick. Oh, cow. One time when I was an apprentice, accidentally nicked a mole with my scissors. They really bleed. Oh, cow. When I first learned how to hair, I gave my mom a haircut and she went from having shoulder-length hair to a number three clip all over because I stuffed it up so bad and just kept going shorter. Mom cried. So did I. Oh, cow. So many more moments I can think of as well. Never a dull day in a salon. Story 29. Okay, in the 11 years I've been doing hair, here's what I've experienced. One, a Polish plate, basically a gigantic dreadlock. All the hair was matted together and smelled terrible. I had to that small animal off her head. It wasn't intentional. 
She had health issues for 10 years. I was very sensitive to her situation until the lady beside her said, Good Lord, woman, when's the last time you brushed your hair? Then I had to go in the back to have a little laugh. But seriously, the smell was the worst. I actually had a post that went to the front page eight years ago back when it happened. It was with a different account that I forgot the password to. But I had pics in that post, too. A man who washed his hair only when he got a haircut. He came to me only 2x a year. The smell of the oil was sickening. And he had dandruff. Oh my, he had so much dandruff. Six months worth. I was the only person in the shop who could stomach doing his hair. I washed it six times or more. I wish we wore masks then. Three. Men who under their cape, please stop doing that. Four. Man who recorded us and took photos. My manager at the time went outside and looked through the window behind him to see what he was doing. He was zooming in on our body parts. He was asked to delete everything and to leave. His wife came in angry and yelled at us. One girl's husband called the guy and cussed him out. I don't know how he got his number. 5. I did a lady's hair for her husband's funeral. She sat quietly and weeped the whole time. I had to hide my face because I kept crying with her. That was hard. 6. Shaved a woman's head who ultimately passed away from ball cancer. She didn't cry. I promised her I wouldn't cry. When she left, I cried in the back. That's all I can remember right now. I'm sure there's more. Story 30. I was the client in this situation. My hairstylist was doing a usual on me, and when she was cutting around one of my ears, her scissors caught onto the top inch or so of the cartilage, like the actual top part of the ear. She kept cutting harder and harder trying to get this thick hair knot. It took me saying, ow, for her to realize she was cutting my ear. No blood, no, just a really bendy ear. She was distracted talking to my mom since I was in like middle school at the time. She never stopped saying it every time I get my hair done. Hasn't happened since either. Story 31. Not a barber, but about three years ago I went to a new hair salon since my last hairdresser had to close down. I had dyed my hair before, and my roots were growing back out. This woman put bleach on my head and left me in the dryer for almost an hour while she unknowingly took her lunch break. I ended up with chemical burns all over my scalp. My hair would stretch like elastic when it got wet. Now my hair grows to the length of my shoulders and then just starts ripping out because of how damaged it still is. Story 32 when I was in beauty school, I had a guy come in with beautiful shoulder-length California surfer hair. He said an inch all over. I was like, wow, that's a big change. You sure you want to do that? He was like, like, yeah, that's what I always do. I figured he was one of those guys that gets one or two haircuts a year. So I put my eight guard on my clippers and went right up their middle. He looked like I disappeared. Him started screaming at me, so I grabbed an instructor to finish the haircut. Turns out he wanted an inch off all over. That's when I learned the value of communication. The other big mistake I made was more of a happy accident. The day I got my barber's kit, my school have you your kit in sections so you would have what you needed for the upcoming classes, but only by a day or two. I came home and told my stepdad I was going to, but his hair. He was like, okay, no problem, so I'm doing his when he asked how I knew what guard to use. My answer, what's a guard? I shaved his head fully as there was no way to make that big patch of zero blend with his comb over. At church that week, all his friends told him how much better he looked with a buzz over a comb over and they told him the same thing at work. It's been 14 years now, and he still keeps a one all over. Story 33. I have two stories, both about other people, though. First is one of my male teachers who had a pretty nice hairstyle, short as in not going past his neck, but pretty long and full. Then one day he comes in with basically a buzz. I'm thinking, huh? Okay, but don't say anything. Then class starts, and I think one of the other students asked what happened. So he goes, I asked for two inches off the top, they thought I said two inches on the top. Yeah, it took a few months to grow back to its original length. The other is about my nephew. My sister was cutting his dad's hair and put down the scissors by the sink while using the razor. My nephew somehow grabbed the scissors and into his hair. He was fine, but a noticeable strand was missing, leaving a hole in his hair. So my sister had to give him a buzz to even it out. He loved it because it felt prickly. He's never done it with normal scissors, but we think he might have thought since this was for hair cutting, he can his hair with it. IDK three-year-old's man. Story 34. I worked at a prestigious salon in an affluent neighborhood of Atlanta. While I was shampooing a client's hair, a roach fell from the open rafter ceiling right into the, the shampoo bowl. I had to finish washing her hair without freaking out as to not cause a scene. I was not graceful about it by any means, but I managed to keep the client from finding out about it. When we were done, I tried to contain the demon roach by covering it with a towel and ran to the back to get the salon assistant maintenance man to take care of the problem. Good times. Story 35. Okay, not a barber, but a story of my barbers. I have a bald spot on the left side of my head. This is the first time my dad took me there. So she starts cutting and snipping, and she buzzes on the left side and notices it. So she calls my dad over and says, Has this always been there, or did I do this? So we look at each other and say, He's had this since he was nine months old. We just laughed. 
We heard a sigh of relief from her.